All right, guys, that's Grammar here, and I hope you're doing well and enjoying all day so far. The World Championship begins here in Dallas tomorrow. All the storylines of the season are coalescing over the next couple of days, but so many big storylines going into it, not just in terms of the teams that might potentially win, but also which teams aren't even there, but will be challenging the potential winning teams come the Esports World Cup. Big roster changes going down, it seems, behind the scenes on the Minnesota Rocker, on the Boston Breach, and also big updates on which teams might be rejecting their invitation to go to the World Cup. Lots to talk about today. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always. As you guys can tell, I'm here in Dallas for the World Championship. I'm going to be heading up to the venue in a couple of hours' time over in Allen just to see what's going on, set things up for the weekend. Thought, you know, at least I get to see a bit of the city here down in Dallas because realistically, given the content and everything going on, I'm going to be spending a lot of time at the venue up in Allen at the hotel nearby the venue. I'm probably not going to get to see too much of Dallas, but it is what it is. We're here for the World Championship after all. These, by the way, are some of the team photos that have been coming out from the COD League on, for example, Toronto Ultra. Now, um, this is so funny for a couple of different reasons. I think the thing that I love the most about this is that it looks like Insight is looking at the neck, right? I mean, if you ever look at Insight's eyes, it looks like he's looking down at the neck. And um, I think he probably is, to be honest. And uh, I mean, they got Scrappy to stand up front with his jersey on. Man, that thing is next level. And the Scrub's like, yeah, wow, this should be an illegal photo to post. Obviously, even Ziddy's talking about it as well, isn't he? So, yeah, good start to the day there for Scrappy, obviously. And, uh, yeah, well, look, long neck will go into the weekend, trying to go one better than last year, right? Because, of course, last season, Scrappy was able to come second place at the World Championship. Got 5 out of course, though, by Kismet over there in the Grand Finals. And the subliners, will the subliners go back-to-back? -back? There's been some debate on that. And, um, you know, Scrappin's in, as always, having a bit of a back and forth. But just so many updates yesterday, of course. Lots of the guys landing here in Dallas. I guess it was media day yesterday yesterday for the pros, which is, I think, one day earlier than they normally do it, because typically it's the Wednesday before where everything's going on, but I guess this time they were doing kind of some media stuff on the Tuesday, then on the Wednesday, I guess they can practice and whatever. But obviously, there's only eight teams there anyway, right? So it's not like there's going to be five games Friday, five games Saturday like there normally is. There's still going to be a lot of games on the weekends. But, um, you know, four teams are already eliminated before even getting there. And, you know, the grand finals is just the Sunday. So um, the schedule is slightly more condensed than usual, which I think is going to be nice. Some of those five match days are kind of gruel, as I'm not going to like the normal majors. But let's talk about the Esports World Cup, right? So this is the Modern Warfare 3 side. The Warzone side has already happened. And there's been some speculation. Okay, we've got the World Championship two odd million dollars whatever it is here in Dallas over the next couple of days then this time next month basically they're in Riyadh Saudi Arabia for the esports world cup which is 1.8 million dollars or something like that so 12 CDL teams are being invited we knew this to be true we knew there was going to be 16 teams there pretty sure last place gets 20 grand so um, that ain't a bad payday for just turning up so therefore you've got to wonder how much of that money goes to the players how much of that money goes to the teams and whether some teams might not be willing to foot the bill shall we say of making this actually happen but yeah the 12 teams are going to be there or are they and that is the big question of last night three challenger teams unclear exactly how the three challenger teams qualify but it's likely to be the top three from Challengers Champs, which makes things a little bit tricky for, let's say, the likes of Clay, because Clay wants to play, but he's probably, well, he may be re signed to another CDL team, but assuming that doesn't happen, he can't just say, oh, hey, I want to play in a Challengers qualifier to try and make it, because I don't know if they're going to do that. They might just take the top three at the Challengers World Championship and invite them, and of course, Clay or anyone else in Clay's position isn't on those teams. The other option then is the MEA qualifier, the Middle East and African qualifier. But um, it seems that in order to play on that, you have to be registered from a list of countries, which is not outside of that region, obviously. So the group stage, by the way, works group A to D, and there are two teams advanced per group. And this is the way they're actually going to do the group. So pretty interesting. The first seed is going to be whoever comes first to fourth place at the playoffs. So the first seed that wins the world championship gets first, and then it goes second, third, fourth and then obviously fifth to eighth but obviously at champs there's not fifth sixth seventh and eighth there used to be back in you know early days even pre-cwl when optic for example weren't seventh or eighth at the world championship in 2015 they were literally seventh because they played a playoff against team caliber to deter i think it was tk to determine who was seventh and who was eighth whereas the next year in black ops 3 it was just top eight, right? So it'll be the same here. There's not exactly going to be an eighth or a seventh. Maybe what they'll do is they'll say, okay, 
whoever places top eight at the World Championship, they'll then look at that and say, okay, who was the highest of those two teams in the regular season standings? That's your seventh, that's your eighth, or whatever. But of course, the top four will be straight up seeded. So they will be seeded in. So, you know, let's say FaZe win the World Championship and Miami come last. Of course, they've come into the tournament as, um, you know, the first in the eighth seed. So it's possible that Miami and FaZe play each other again in, in this particular setup if what we see in the seedings for champs is very similar to what we actually see in the results of the World Championship. Then, though, we have the CDL non-playoff teams. So, you know, the other four get seeded through, probably based on standings or something. And then we have the three challenger teams in Group A, B, C. And then the online MEA qualifier team is going to go in Group D. Now, this is quite interesting just because Group D is the easiest group, I guess, right? Because it's the fourth and the fifth teams in the playoffs. So theoretically, the one that you've got the best chance of getting out of, maybe. I guess it does depend, though, because you can argue it's the other way, right? That maybe you'd actually prefer to be in Group A because then, okay, you have to play the number one seed, but you also play the eighth seed. So, you know, your chances of coming second in the group are maybe higher than if you have to play two, like, pretty good teams. So there's some debate on that, obviously, but whatever. The NBA qualifier team is possibly going to be Team Falcons. We don't know who's going to win it yet, but I'm sure that would be part of the ideal plan, right, for, you know, the Saudis for Team Falcons to win the NBA qualifier through this open qualifier and therefore qualify for the eSports World Cup soon. So as Jake Kell says... If you want to play in the MENA or, you know, Middle Eastern Africa, Middle East Africa, whatever you want to say, qualifier, you've got to be either from any of these countries. And if you're not, then um, you can't qualify. So the Saudi orgs can't just pick up clay and pick up, you know, other guys that didn't make champs or have now been dropped or whatever and um, try and run it up. It ain't going to happen, right? So anyway, that's the format. That's how things are going to go. But the question really was then being raised. What happens if a CDL team says no? What if they don't want to go? Because they've been invited, all of the teams. But what if they reject the invitation? And um, that is when the question is being raised on the Los Angeles Gorillas and potentially others as well. We shall see. But Jake Hale is confident enough to put this out in an article yesterday that Gorillas are expected to reject their invitation to the World Cup. So this is like so gutting for the players. That's what I think. These guys have just qualified for the World Championship, right? Like, they just made it to champs, and they're trying to be excited and optimistic about their future, but all of a sudden, the organization is like, yeah, guys, we ain't wanting to be any more part of Call of Duty Esports. We're straight up out of here, and we're not even going to go. And this is wild in the sense, as I say, if you come last, you get 20 grand. The issue is, I guess, is that maybe the contract is in place that the organization takes, let's say, 20% of that, so let's say four grand, is that enough to pay for the travel, for the accommodation, for all the costs of their players? You know, probably not, to be honest, depending what the Esports World Cup was or was not going to cover. I don't know. But for whatever reason, the team, it seems, is just going to reject it. And therefore, an additional Challengers team is going to get an invite to go instead, which I think is like, I wish they could say... All right, guys, who were meant to play for the Gorillas, as in the current team, Diamond Con, Estriel, etc., etc., you can come and play for another organization, right? Surely that would be fine. I just feel, you know, bad for the players because I imagine they want to attend and play. You know, I think they probably would do, but their organization is so uninterested in staying in cards. They were effectively forced to last year because no one wanted to buy the spot and contractually they're mandated to field the team. So I'm really hoping this offseason someone buys Gorillas. And this is Ben says, right? LAG aside, it'd be nice of EWC if they could just invite the four players as a team so someone could pick them up instead. But, um, you know, it might go against some sort of agreement. Obviously, they're contracted to Los Angeles Gorillas, so it would be a bit difficult. But um, I guess it is what it is. Now, elsewhere in the article, though, we did have some talk on Rostomania because this makes things very interesting for Gorillas going into the actual World Championship. They, of course, play tomorrow against Optic Texas in the first round is that Minnesota Rocker, we think they're keeping Gunless, we think they're keeping Linz, they're looking at alternatives, and apparently they're interested in both Diamond Con and Estriel. So the idea would be, Gorillas do whatever they do at the World Championship, and then after Champs, Minnesota Rocker say, hey, you guys aren't getting invited anyway, do you want to come and play for us? And they'd probably say, yeah, sure, why not? But of course, that makes serious questions as to what those guys would do, like what Gorillas do, what their team looks like next season. And also whether this is good for Minnesota Rockerites, but definitely interesting that they're interested in Diamond Con alongside Gunless as an AR duo. Pretty slow, again, not going to lie, but, you know, Rocker love a slow AR duo. They love a slow team, really. And then Estriel and Linz, which I actually kind of like, I'm not going to lie, as an SMG duo. So that's interesting to think about, but actually he does go on to say that the expectation is that the World Cup roster, so let's say it's Gunless, Linz, Diamond Con, Estriel, for the World Cup, is not what they're planning for Black Ops 6, i.e. they might make further changes. So Rocker 
Rocker, potential big overhaul going on there. But let's talk about Boston here because this was another big storyline of yesterday. They're going to the World Cup, it seems. Their roster is likely to be Cami Arstey's Purge Sleepy. Now, we saw this on July the 5th. Doug, because there was lots of reaction to this, Doug then came out and said, no, that's not true, that roster's not correct, and, um, you know, at least he made this implication privately to many of us behind the scenes, and therefore there were questions what they were actually going to do, but it turns out the team apparently is very similar, and this is the new version of four that they are apparently looking at. We know that Snoopy's still there, but um, they're looking at Cami, and now instead of Arsatis, it's Awakening, and then Purge, right? So this is the talk about, you know, it's like misinformation or whatever. But, um, okay, so this is apparently your new Boston team of four. Is it much different to the old Boston team of four? I don't really know if it is. You know, the Purge, Snoopy, SMG, Duo, the Cami, Wake Now, AR combo. I don't know. I don't see a lot of optimism in this. The potential is always there. Like, there's players here with some pretty good upside. But, um, and I think I probably prefer this to the Arsities one. But then I guess I'm wondering, like, who's going to be, you know, who's going to do the leadership stuff on the team? Typically with Awakening, he's maybe had a, an AR alongside him with a bit more, you know, maybe a bit more vocal type thing. So maybe Arsties would have made sense instead alongside Cami. The Purge Snoopy duo, I, I think I'm going to struggle to be convinced by, to be honest. But that's the latest update on that. This as well, though, on the Ravens. We saw the other day that they're probably going to keep fellow Tej and Gwyn and looking for one. And one of the guys that many people of you guys in the comments were saying is like, why not look at Beans, right? Because Beans has been released by Boston, clearly a talented AR, would bring some serious slang, I would think, to Ravens, which is probably what they need. Why not look at him? Now, they tried Mercules. Apparently, they've also tried Sparts, who's getting looked at again, so fair play to Sparts, but also Beans. So, you know, apparently they might have looked at or trialed Beans, and I think that would be interesting to know, try to Beans fellow, because I think in some ways fellow... He's got a lot of leadership qualities that Clayster also has. I never really felt that that Clay Fellow AR duo was going to last forever. So, um, you know, Fellow Beans, Tej Gwyn, I don't think that's bad at all. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Just one final thing thought was interesting here from Brian Stapps on a BZ. In the four grand finals that he's been in, he has the highest KD at 1.16, number one all time. 462 kills in the grand finals at the World Championship, number one all time. First player alongside Sim to make four consecutive champs finals. And of course, didn't happen last year, but they may get back on the train this year. And these are his overall KDs at every champs he's played, which is actually pretty absurd. So um, he's had another one this year probably is going to add another good number to this list, although it's not been his best season at BZ, it must be said. Whether he can win, that of course is another question, but very much on Twitter your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.